Chris here. Thanks so much for coming by. We're going to do another beautiful painting here. We're going to be doing a gorgeous barn scene. And uh, you're going to really enjoy this. It's a simple painting. Really the most technical thing we're going to do here is some of the brushwork for the trees and the twigs and the brush on this painting. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. We're going to just draw a nice barn with some windows, some doors. You're going to see this is a really fun painting. Everyone can do, whether you just started out uh, with watercolor painting or if you're a pro and you've been painting for 10, 15 years, anyone can paint this painting. It's a lot of fun. You can try it in different seasons. We're going to paint it in the autumn feel. So here we're doing an autumn type feel. So let's kind of zoom in here just a little bit. You'll see it's an autumn feel, right? Maybe some of that green grass is still there a little bit, but we're kind of like the leaves have fallen off maybe. And uh, maybe we're getting into like fall, winter time. Maybe it's springtime. You can make your paintings mysterious. You can have a great time with this. Well, let's get started. We're going to do the pencil drawing first, and then we're going to get into the painting. Everyone, you can do this. No problem at all. Follow along with us. Take your time. Um, pause as much as you need to as you work along with us. And again, always try to work for my finished paintings. That's the best way to do it because you're looking at the exact way I created the painting with the same colors, the same washes. So let's try to do that. Try to work from my works. Best way to try to recreate what I'm doing is to uh, use my paintings as a guide to uh, paint from. Best way to do it. So um, leave comments in the comments section if you have any questions, of course, always. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions anyone has about my paintings, anything we're doing here, techniques, so on and so forth. Um, happy painting, everyone. Thanks again for all your great comments, your questions, your thumbs up. If you don't like the painting too, thumbs down, that's okay. Um, but I'm always excited to see more comments, and thanks everyone for giving me the great encouragement. Uh, I'm really enjoying painting on YouTube year after year with everyone here. And uh, we'll just keep going, learning more getting better at our paintings. That's all we want is to get better, to make better looking paintings, have more fun, enjoy with our paintings. So we'll get started in just a second. Thanks and let's, we'll be back in just a second. Okay, hello, hello, hello again. We're here, you saw the finished painting. Let's get right into it here. We're not gonna, um, take too much time we're going to just get right right into the drawing of this wonderful barn scene so we're going to do a beautiful white barn um, I'm going to find my cell phone here it's somewhere around the studio give me one second please and apologies for that delay So I am going to go to my photos. So essentially what I do here is I, um, I just uh, take a screen capture on my cell phone of a picture online on a Google search. I search like a barn scene. I, I just typed in barn, uh, barn photos, found a cool looking scene just like this and that's what I'm going to use and I'll just set this across from me uh, across from my table here my table set up we'll draw from this and we'll paint from this and it's as simple as that and if you want to use my painting you just you do the same thing you just save uh, maybe a screen capture while you're watching the video you can do a screen capture on your phone if you don't know how to do a screen capture you can look that up online on uh, YouTube YouTube has plenty of videos to uh, explain how to do a screen capture, you just press a couple buttons on your uh, phone. It makes a still photograph of whatever you're, you're watching on a video or it, one of the photographs you might be looking at, and that saves it to your photos in your in your phone. Then you can open that up and then you can just use it as you want to uh, paint from, draw from, etc. So let's do that. So I'm just going to set this across from me here, and we're going to use this for our. Um, our reference material and again I would say use the uh, finished painting that I created as your reference so instead of using a photograph you can just use my painting it's probably better to do it that way 
but uh, you you do it as you feel the you know comfortable. Um, so here I have my paper set up in more of a landscape um, view. So we'll we'll maybe stretch out the painting a little more, make it a little more interesting. So essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my drawing or my photograph across from me, and I'm going to say, all right, let me just start making some hash marks on my paper to get a feel for where things are in the photograph. So I'm going to try to really basically use my photograph as my guide and then I take what I see in my photograph and I start making hash marks around my tape. So I've taped around my my watercolor paper. I use, I'm use i using Arches watercolor paper, satin. This time we're going to use some satin paper, nice soft smooth paper. It's an Arches brand. It's the uh, pink uh, cover if you're if you're looking at the uh, arches paper I use gummed gummed pads arches gummed pads and the cover on the satin paper the smooth paper is pink if you want to use rough paper you just get the orange the orange color uh, pad or a block they're called blocks I guess people call them pads blocks you know um, so on and so forth so I'm going to do this now I'm going to take my Sharpie pen, and I'm going to say, all right, the barn roof starts about here in the picture. This is about halfway, so it's a little bit above halfway. So I'm going to take note of that. Then I'm going to say, okay, well, where's the peak peak of the barn? The gable ridge, the ridge, the top point of the, the barn. Well, this is halfway on my paper, and it's a little bit over from halfway, so it's about there a little bit to the side of halfway. So this is half. It's over this way, just a little bit. So we'll do that. So we'll make this line here and we'll say this is the ridge ridge of the um, barn roof. And then this over here is the uh, this is the uh, side over here of the barn uh, rake edge, so we call that a rake edge of the structure of the uh, roof. And then here we're going to look and say um, where is the wall, the end, the sort of like the end of the building, and that's about over here. So I put it up here and say okay this is about the the wall, wall line. So now I have the ridge, which is the peak of the roof, like that. That's the ridge right there on the peak. The side over here, this is the rake wall. The building is off to the side here, so it's a, a, a photograph where they zoomed into the structure, to the barn. So you're going to notice that some of the barn is kind of outside the frame of the picture. And then over here we have the wall line, which is about where the wall is over here. And then over here is the trees and so forth. So, okay, so we have the idea here, the basic idea. So let's draw, let's start drawing this. You can use your ruler. It's kind of helpful to use the ruler. You just take the ruler and you go up there like that and you go from this. Let's make it a little bit higher there, like that. So sometimes you have to, you change a little bit, sometimes you might think you don't want it that steep of an angle, so you go a little bit higher over here. Then over here we have the wall line. So let's go down here with the wall line and go really lightly with your pencil line on this here. So you want to go really lightly here, like that, and you want to take your ridge, ridge line and go here. And then what you can do is if you want to get the proper point here, you could do this. Make a line there. <clears throat> that would be a little bit too high. So sometimes when you're trying to work out some angles and some lines, you have to just just go for it. C 
kind of see what looks good. I think that looks good there. I go really lightly and just see how that looks. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, and that goes over a little bit over the wall. Like that. And here's our wall. There we go. So now we have basically our barn shape. Pretty simple, right? Nothing too too crazy. Then we go across here, we'll get our the barn has two sections. It has clapboard siding on the top section. And on the bottom section of the barn, it looks like it has some uh, vertical siding some vertical maybe some plywood even that might even be some plywood or some thick heavy uh, barn wood along the side over here let's take this and go like so like that that's about where it is so it's further down from where the rake edge meets the wall you have the like that that's all so you just take your time, look at the photograph, look at my painting, follow my painting, basically my drawing here. Then we're going to go with the, let's start with the uh, window up here. So the window is centered on the ridge. So you have your ridge here. You can do a super light, super light pencil line just to get your center mark coming from the ridge, the very, very tippy top peak of the ridge of the roof. Do a super light line going down the center. That's the center of your wall, the center of your gable wall here. Then we're going to put our window on that center line. So here, we're going to take our window and just go across here like that. You could draw a freehand or you can use the ruler. Let's use the ruler. We're just going to do a rectangle here. And it's going to be not a square, but a rectangle. Like that. Might be a little bit too big, but we're just going to leave it. It looks okay. It's, we could make the uh, trim on this window like so. You can use your ruler. Get your trim nice and square. You could do it freehand too. If you like to draw freehand, that's fine. Draw freehand. You don't have to use a ruler. Then we'll get the halfway point. We'll make the double hung window here. It's a sash window. Like that. Then we're going to do the barn doors here. So the barn doors are This is the line, of course, across the barn where the clapboard siding is. So you can take this here and do your clapboard siding. You can use some, you can use a, your ruler to kind of get some, start some lines with your ruler like this. And you just kind of evenly do them. If you have to measure them, you can measure them. You can take your, your ruler and just say, okay, I'm going to go every, um, every, every sixteenth of an inch, I'm going to make a clapboard. 16th, 16th, 16th. You can use your ruler. 16th, 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 16th. If you use metric, you can come over here, you know, and you start using metrics. Maybe every two millimeters you can make a clapboard. However you want to do it, you can do it freehand too. Maybe you just do a couple lines here and there freehand. However you want to do it. You're the artist. You can make this as free or as tight as you want. You know, you can make this a really tight um, architectural type uh, work of art where you're going to do everything, you're going to space everything out just right. It's up to you. You can do that too. So I'll just do some lines here. You can take your ruler, do some lines. Maybe you do a couple here and there. It's up to you. You can take all the time in the world, get all your clapboards in all the way up, all the way across, all the way up. You could do that too by measuring them and then going just across with your ruler, you know, one at a time. I'm going to take more of a loose approach, maybe a couple lines here and there. Main thing is you, if you're going to do lines here and there, hit and miss, just line them up across though, all the way across. So if you're going to do some hit and miss, 
like so. Make sure you, you get them all the way across like this. So they all line up in the same area. Like that. And then I'll do some more over here. Again, totally up to you how detailed you want this to be. I'm just doing a few lines here and there. I am using my ruler. Then we're going to use our rule over here to get our door, our barn doors here. So we notice we have some some wall over here and then the barn doors start about here. They go down and then actually I'm going to get some, I'm going to get my eraser, my kneaded eraser. And I'm just going to erase a little bit because we do have some ground in front of the uh, the barn. It's a little bit of ground. So let's put that ground in before we start to do the door and, and all the bottom of the barn section. So this is the ground level. Get your ground level established. Like that. Get that established because you need to have that about three quarters, half inch or three quarters of an inch. Or uh, one, I guess about 1.5 centimeters or about uh, half an inch of ground space underneath the bottom of the barn. You want that little bit of space there for some ground and some gravel and some snow, however you want to paint it, some snow, some grass, how, whatever you'd like to do. If you want to make it a winter scene, you can make this all white snow and make it more of a wintry scene. Or if you want to go with grass and some dirt and rocks and sand along this bottom section, you do that too. All right, you know what? Let's take a quick break. We've done a lot so far. Take a quick break, and then um, and I'm going to take a break myself. And I also want to mention, too, hey, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It's that red button right below here. If you subscribe, you're going to get all our new videos coming out every week, week after week, month after month, year after year. We're here on YouTube. We're here for you so you can learn, grow, become more skilled at watercolor painting. We do everything watercolors. We do farm scenes buildings, seascapes, landscapes, flowers, still life, figure painting, you name it. We do everything watercolor here, so keep coming back. You're going to learn a great amount of techniques and methods and details of watercolor. You're going to get better at your watercolors. If you just stick here, click that notification bell, click the, um, of course, subscribe and the notification bell at the same time. This way you're alerted each week as we create a new video. Sometimes we create one or two videos a week, sometimes three. And then you'll have everything as you go that you need to keep getting better. We, you can also go back in the archives of my channel where you can learn all about palettes, paints, brushes, techniques, everything. So always utilize my uh, archives, my YouTube videos, the, the archive videos that, ha that I have on my YouTube channel. And as well, each week if you're just following along, you're going to learn all those details anyway. So it's up to you. You can go back and check out some of my older videos, but we're always going to be covering the same methods and techniques and met and uh, details that we have on this channel week after week so that you'll always be getting those as you go. Okay, so but main thing I always teach on my channel here, as you know, take breaks. Don't keep working and working and working and working and not take breaks. You'll wind up losing concentration and then doing things that are going to look a little bit uh, unpleasant. So let's stick with our game plan. Let's take a break. Already I'm getting my fingers in the paint here and who knows, we'll be smudging paint on the paper and having a problem. So let's have a fun time. Let's enjoy ourselves. But at the same time, let's take breaks. I'm going to take a 15 minute break, have a little bit of coffee, uh, maybe watch a little bit of YouTube videos or something, or uh, maybe um, just uh, sit in a chair and uh, relax for a few minutes and then I'll come back and we'll get back started again. Okay. All right. So we'll be right back. Okay, we're starting back up again. Woohoo! We're, we're getting back into it here. All right, so we're doing our barn scene. We used our ruler here. So if you're following along, we used our ruler to do some clapboard siding here along this on this uh, gable uh, side of this barn. We used our ruler and we did our window. You don't always have to use the ruler. You can do it freehand if you like. It depends how um, you want your painting to look. So here I'll do a little freehand. We'll do some uh, of the um, we'll do some of the lights within the window, some of that glazing and the um, trim within the window there. Then now we're, we're getting ready. Let's start up. We're going to do our uh, barn door. 
with windows. So here we go. We're going to do our barn door with windows. And again, if you're going to do this painting and drawing, you're just going to use my video here to, to create your drawing and your, your painting. That's the best way to go. Um, you'll be matching the colors. You'll be matching the pencil lines, everything, just as we do it. So now we're going to do our barn door. We'll go across like this. This barn door is pretty pretty good size. It's almost to the edge of where this window is. So I look here and go, all right, where is my barn door? Well, if I look at my window here and I say, well, if I drop a plumb line down from my window, straight line going down this way with my ruler, and I put my finger there and say, okay, where is the barn door? And it looks about good. The barn door is just a little bit over from that window. So that looks pretty good. We could use this. Okay, this is the bottom of the door. Then we're going to go with a little bit of some trim over the top of the do uh, barn doors, like this. There's a little bit of a header trim. So we notice that. There's some header trim. And again, I'm using my ruler. You don't have to use a ruler. You can just do this freehand. Okay, so you have some header trim over the doors. This is a double door here on the barn door. So we'll go with the center of the door if you want. Might be a good idea if you're not uh, from if you're not really used to scaling things a lot. You can do you can do your the center of your door with your ruler. You just measure the. Let's do it in metric. Five centimeters. So this is five centimeters wide. To get the halfway point, we go 2.5 centimeters right there. And that gives you the center of the two doors. Perfect. You could do it in inches in uh, the uh, regular uh, standard met method. So here you have, um, this is two inches. So one inch is the center of the door. If it's two inches wide, one inch is the center of the door. That's all you need. Perfect. Look at that. How easy is that? There you go. Center of the door. Then we make uh, the windows on the uh, garage doors here, the barn doors here. So I'm going to take that and I'm just going to make make a rectangle going across. The barn door windows are a little bit more than halfway up from the center. So if that's the center, we could get a center mark and say how many. 3.5 centimeters. We could do it very simply. We make a center mark approximately where the, where the center of the doors are, and then we know the windows are just a little bit above that center line. So let's do that. There we go. that, like that, there you go. Pretty simple. So now we have our windows. Now the windows are in thirds. So there's three divisions. So you can kind of make a little couple dots and say let me divide this in three spaces. One, two, three. And then over here, one, two, three. So you just make three equal divisions by eye if you have to, or you can measure it again with your ruler with centimeters or standard uh, American uh, standard, which is inches, uh, you know, eighth, sixteenth, thirty seconds, the um, standard measurement, or you can use again the centimeters and millimeters to get your divisions of thirds. But that's basically what this is, thirds, you can do it by eye. So here we have thirds, it doesn't have to be perfect, thirds, there we go, and then halfway, cross this way. So you can see that the window panes on the door are split in thirds and halves. So this way, vertically, it's split in thirds, one-third, two-thirds, three-thirds, which is a hole. One-third, two-thirds, three-thirds, that's a hole. And then once you do that, and you have your thirds going across, then you're just going to go halfway in between is the halfway point for your other 
division for your lights and your windows for your barn door. Is that pretty simple or what? It's pretty easy actually. And then once you start painting, it's going to just blend in and you're going to have a beautiful time with it. It's going to be a lot of fun. When you're doing the pencil drawing, it's a little more accurate. But when you're painting, you're not really getting all that crazy and fussy. Or not. You'll see as we go. When we paint this, we're going to have a good time and we're not going to be suffering over every little line and all that kind of thing. You know, we're just trying to get the pencil marks good. That's our main guide. And then once we start painting, we, we loosen up a little bit. Okay, so we have our barn doors in. We have our window on our the side of our barn here on this gable end of the barn. We have, uh, let's do our tree. We have a tree along here. Now I notice the tree in this photograph is right along this window. I think we'll move it a little bit. Let's move it. Um, you could even change things and not put a tree in here. If you see a tree or a bush or a plant or something and you don't really think it's that great, you can change that. You know, you're the artist. You can change things as you go, as you paint, as you create your composition. You're the master of your artwork. You can do things as you wish. So here I might say, let me leave out this tree over here on this side, but let me put a couple extra ones over here. Or you might say, I'm going to leave that tree in there where it is, the way it is in the photograph, because I, I like it. It looks pretty good. So that's up to you. I think I like the tree the way it looks over here. I'm just going to move it over a little bit, and I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just move it over a little bit in this composition, and I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to move it over a little bit. And that's all I'm going to do. And it goes up. And there's some branches that go up from this. And then I just try to follow where those branches are. Same angle. So you have your main trunk of the tree that goes up like this. Then your branches are on like a 40 degree angle approximately. So a lot of your branches here are going to be at 40 degree angles. So you can check out that and say, okay, yeah, I agree. That, that's going to be about 40 degree angles here. That looks good. And then, then we'll do most of this with the brush. We're going to go in here with our needlepoint brush and get some of those more fine, minute details on that tree here. But it's a little bit thicker down here, so the trunk of the tree is a little th thicker like that. So we're just going to make it thicker here and... Just drawing a little bit of a thicker trunk of the tree in the center, and then these are small, and a couple little small twigs going downwards. That's all we need. Just a couple indications with our pencil, not too much. We don't want to draw in every single branch. Let's leave that as it is. Then there's some more over here, so we're going to go with some more branches over here behind the barn like that there's some more branches and these are more fast more loose I'm not going to worry about it too much okay and then we're sort of working over here now. We have, this is pretty much all set. So we have our gable end of our barn here, all set, window in, doors in. And then over here to the right, we're gonna have some bushes, some trees. And uh, we're gonna try to build in some really nice distance here on the side so we could actually do a little erasing over here. I'm going to erase this line a little bit. And I'm going to say that this distant grass and field is about there. And then we can start building in some more here over here. This is another tree over here. Again, we're having fun here. Don't get too caught up in every detail. So there's a little bit of a tree there. And then over here, there's some more bushes. 
So there's a bush over here and some grasses and weeds. There we go. So you're the artist, you're the master of your paintings. I'm here now improvising. I'm just seeing that there's some branches, twigs, trees in the background here, but I'm not gonna take a lot of time because I'll do that with the brush. We'll use our needlepoint brush. There's some bushes over here, some, some we'll do a little bit of uh, some weeds. And again, you can make this any season you want. You can make this fall, winter, spring, summer. It's up to you. Um, maybe we'll do this um, right now. I'll do this the way the photograph looks, more of an autumn looking, winter looking uh, painting. But you could do it in summer. You can make all this leaves and greens. You could take all this and make these all green here, all really bright, vibrant green around the whole top of the barn shape of the roof and then add some greens and beautiful yellows and greens on this tree here. But again, I'm going to stick with what my photograph, which is more of a winter scene, which is more uh, not many leaves, not many um, leaves and, and, and greens. It's, it's more of like a wintry scene, so you'll, you'll see that we're going to kind of do that. All right, so we're finished with our drawing. That's the key here. If you can get a good pencil drawing in, just like we did here, even simpler than this, you don't have to get into as much detail as you want. You can just do a more simple, um, maybe just the shape of the barn. Get in your window shape and your, your, your window shape, your door shape. Maybe you can get in like this bottom line here, which separates the bottom half of the building. So you have your clapboards up on top, your long lines of clapboards. Then your bottom here is more verticals. There's some vertical lines here. It looks like some plywood or some vertical type style siding here on the side of the building. And then some uh, couple trunks, maybe a large tree here on the left. Maybe a you know another large or medium sized tree over here on the right. And then some twigs, some branches, a couple bushes, and you're all set. So have fun with this. Try it, I don't know, try it two, three times. Maybe do one each season. Do four. Do spring, summer, winter, fall. And uh, you'll, have, you'll have it. You'll have four times you've practiced this beautiful barn scene. You'll be all set. Okay, so I'm going to take a quick break. And um, again, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Thumbs up if you like this video. Hey, leave comments, and I want to say thank you for all the great comments everyone leaves. Every week we do new videos, I get great comments, questions, insights, thank yous, the whole gamut. I love it all. Thank you so much for coming by, and I'm so happy to be here on YouTube. And uh, we'll be right back. We'll start painting. We'll this will be the fun stuff when we're doing the painting, okay? All right. Woo, we're going to come right back. Paint. We're going to paint. Happy painting. Woo! All right, we're back. We're back. We're going to be painting right in a second here. Let me just say right here, we're going to be using a little bit of a different brush. I have three brushes here. These are um, square brushes, flat brushes. Um, I figured I would use these for the windows. So sometimes, you know, you can break out a couple different brushes if you want to kind of be able to do a, do like a more um, accurate job with your windows and you don't want to really have a difficult time trying to get square shaped windows with a round brush. I notice that if you're doing a smaller painting, if you're doing a really large painting, you can do square windows um, with a round brush and you can get it pretty accurate. But if we're doing a smaller painting like this, sometimes I use my square brushes. So basically I, I have three and they're like small, medium, large. This one's a um, Princeton um, number two. It's called a shader, Princeton number two, Princeton Art and Brush Company. I'll just give you the brushes so you, you can jot them down if you want. These aren't tremendously expensive. These are more um, 
synthetic brushes, synthetic flat brushes. So that's the first one I'll use. That's the small one. We'll use that one for the windows. On number two. And if you have to stop the video and take notes, please do so you can get the information. Number two, Princeton shader. And it's a square synthetic watercolor brush. Then we have we'll also use a um, this one here, the lettering has worn off, so I'm not sure what this is. But it's a little bit larger, probably for over here. And then this one here too is a uh, Princeton Neptune half, or is a quarter inch. So this is a quarter inch Princeton Neptune brush, and it's clear, it's translucent. It's got a kind of an aqua, aqua color, like an aqua green, beautiful looking brush. And that one is uh, for the larger windows here. So we can use these three. So basically any, any three small size synthetic watercolor brushes you can pick up um, to do some of these smaller window shapes might be good. Uh, I have a lot of brushes and these are three that we'll use here. And then you always would know that when we're painting always on my channel, I'm always using round brushes, my Da Vinci round brushes, watercolor brushes. So let's get started here. We're going to mix up some paint. Let's start out with the medium sized brush here. I'll use brown, uh, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, um, Prussian blue. More of that, burnt umber, Prussian blue burnt umber is great, beautiful, dark. Maybe a little bit of red too, some burnt sienna, just to get some warm in there. Let's do these, for, well let's do the top, let's do the smallest brush first. So this is the uh, smallest, number two, Princeton, synthetic, flat brush. And let's do that, look at that. Ooh, that looks so good, doesn't it? And it's so easy to do. We can do squares all day long with this. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just getting it. You, you, all you have to do is get in those square shapes with a flat brush, a square brush like this, and the, the, all the work gets done for you. You don't have to worry about it. And we'll do one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Just like that. Look at that. Perfect. Then along the underside here, you're going to blend that in. There's a little more shade under there, and the same with the top. Then I rinse off my brush, and maybe I just put a little bit of water on there and let it sort of mixed together. Looks good. You can use the same brush and just do the rest of the... Now what I did was with my phone, see I have my phone here, I want to make sure I put my phone on the setting that allows it to stay on full time here so my picture doesn't shut off and it just shut off on me so I was having an issue with that let me go over here take my phone go to my settings and I go to my display and brightness settings and I click on the auto locks feature and I put on never which means it never shuts off so that my screen will stay on at all times all the time and it won't shut off and I'll go back to my picture, and there we go. I have my picture back up again. I set it across from me, and we're going to continue on. And there we go. And if you go over a line or something like that, you can use some white paint later. We'll use some white, titanium white paint later. But you can see here I'm just doing my squares. Pretty much you have always that shadow under the top section of your windows where the shadow blots out the
the trim between the window panes. And when you have a square brush like this, you can really get creative and you don't have to worry too much. Same thing here. You get that shadow line underneath the, all the way across. Like that. That looks pretty good. You can, I'll go in across here and just do a little blending. You can take a tissue or a paper towel and blot up a little bit. Sometimes you can blot up a little bit like that. You can blot up. Use a little more warm colors here if you feel like you want to add a couple warmer colors in there. If it's too cool you can add some warm colors there. Okay, and again we can use some white paint later if you want to recapture some of the darks or some of the lights. Okay, there we go. Now we got our beautiful window panes in with our darks. And we just use the number two. Princeton uh, shader, synthetic number two, and I think that's good. Now we're going to go and we'll grab our, um, maybe we'll use our round brush now. We'll use a little bit of a, a larger round brush, a Raphael brush here, number six, and we'll start getting in some of those brown, burnt sienna, raw umber over here. So we'll just start mixing around a little bit. A little bit of blue, cerulean blue, just for some cool mixture. And then we can start getting in some of those. And again, be as free, carefree as you want. I'm going to do some of this. Just some. I'm going to go right where those lines are. And I'm sliding my hand. I have my hand resting on the paper. So I just have my hand on the paper on my work, work table here. I have plenty of extra room to work on. So even though my painting is here, I have at least another like 12 inches of table that I'm working on. So I can rest my arm and my hand on it. And then that's how I can do this. I can just take my brush and slide it on across like this. Look at that. like that and that's the siding the clapboard siding and you could take some darker colors maybe mix in a little bit of these darks over here and then just maybe a few spots here and there add a little bit of dark not everywhere a couple spots here and there and that tends to work really good you mix up the lights and the darks um, looks good. And you can see I'm just having fun here. I'm just getting those vertical lines and that might be good. Then I might splash a little bit. Like that. There we go. Splash on there. Then maybe Add a little bit of a little bit of that splash, kind of blend in that splash color here and there. Splash, add the blending color in there. 
Then we have a little bit of that red, maybe a little bit of the gold, raw sienna. Maybe there's even a little bit of that orange, just a tiny touch of cadmium orange. Here and there. Cadmium orange with yellow ochre. I'm leaving that little bit of an edge for the uh, top of the roof. So I'm leaving that pencil line here. I'm leaving that pencil line and going underneath with that shadow kind of feel. And then I go light and dark. There we go. So you just mix it up a little bit, light and dark. I'm just using that burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and Prussian blue over here. I mix that over there with a little bit of the raw sienna, yellow ochre, and then you have it. Some shadows over here. Cerulean blue for sky color, like that. And again, this is an autumn scene, so I'm not going to be making a lot of bright greens and things like that. I'm just doing a very low-key looking painting, some cerulean blue in the sky, mixed in with the golds and the blues and the browns. Mostly uh, the sky is very low-key, kind of grayish looking. So I'm just going to swirl around the paint mixed with some fresh clean water so that you have some of that that nice look of uh, grayed down sky wash you want a little bit of the golds and the browns mixed in with the blues so you're kind of doing a little bit of a glazing lots of water then you can bring that right down all the way across Again, I'm having a fun time. I'm just swirling around the brush, getting the wash on there. I'm just trying to get a, a light wash on everything. Like that. Same thing over here. Let's get that same kind of wash going everywhere on the barn, too. It's kind of a grayish wash. Same thing over here. So I'm just doing basically a nice light, very low key painting. Not a lot of high key look to it. It's kind of a lower key look to it. Cerulean blue and uh, Yellow ochre kind of seems to be a good combination to get your grays in here, your nice grayish colors, kind of a warm and cool feel. A little bit of touch of cadmium orange here and there, just to add some a little more excitement to it. Like there, look at that. Wow! Oh, that looks good. All the way across. Cadmium orange, just a very, very little bit of cadmium orange. More more or less yellow ochre over here, just some warmer kind of a wash there. And then let's go over that there. There we go. You're really going to enjoy how this turns out. Have fun with this. And we're going to take another break. We're going to let this all dry 100%, but you can kind of see what we did here. We really got the pencil drawing done, and then we went in and did our darks for our windows. Once we got the darks for the windows, then we just started going around and putting on like a glazing. Pretty much like a glazing technique, really. But we did do the windows first. You could wait on the windows and do the whole glazing first, 
and then do your windows last. That's fine too. So then this would kind of be a glazing technique really overall. But essentially what we did was we got the main portion of the drawing done and then we just started in with our colors, our washes. And you can see we have really cerulean blue, yellow ochre, raw sienna <clears throat> to get our nice gray warm and cool grays to kind of give that undercoat to this painting and then once we're taking a break and letting this dry 100 percent we'll come back and we'll do the finishing touches but I think this is getting close to complete again get that full glazing across the whole paper across the whole barn the sky the bushes the foreground all of the barn area get that all with a nice light wash of the yellow ochre cerulean blue with a little bit of this mixture here just to give it that har you know harmonize all the colors so I did have some of these colors in here you can add in that as you go okay now you've got it you're really going to have a wonderful time with this let this dry 100 percent so that's the main thing let this dry 100 percent maybe like a half an hour 45 minutes maybe an hour or you can come back the next day finish up let it dry come back the next day the paper will be completely flat perfect and then you can start again and do your final details we're going to do our trees tree trunks branches some of the bushes over here and we'll be all complete so you're going to see how wonderful this looks it just takes a little bit of patience you have to let this dry now once you get this whole wash on here like this you have to let that dry like really for about an hour or more you can use a blow dryer too if you want to speed up the process and maybe in 10 minutes you can dry it with a blow dryer and then it'll, it'll be the same effect the only thing is when you let it dry naturally the water soaks the watercolors the colors the water soaks through the paper and it gives it a more beautiful look. So always remember when you're using a blow dryer to dry your paintings, you're stopping the process of the water filtering down through the fibers of the paper. So you're not going to have quite as good looking of a painting when you do it that way. But if you want to rush it just to get it done and it's just an exercise or a composition, go for it. Okay. All right. We'll be right back. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and hit thumbs up if you like it. Also to comments. If you want to have questions, comments, I love everyone's comments and questions. They're always fantastic. Always leave comments, questions. I'll answer them. And uh, this way, you know, you'll have more information to uh, make your paintings look better. Okay, we'll be right back. All right, we're back, everybody. Thanks so much again for coming by, for painting along with us and sticking through the whole process here. We're having a lot of fun. We're doing a beautiful barn scene here in the uh, gorgeous, uh, you know, landscape type of uh, uh, painting um, composition here. And um, we have a lot of work already completed. So what we really basically did was we started out with our pencil drawing and then we got really here we did our dark windows our window panes and then after that we started working in our uh, washes here our sky washes and the washes over the barn so now we're really set we did a we call that really the glazing technique where we just glaze over the whole paper to get that nice medium tonal value across the whole paper and then now we can continue on with our darkest darks um, to complete the painting. So let's do this. Let's get started here back up again. So we have um, our paint here. We can just go with our burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. Um, we have some beautiful Prussian blue. Um, we're going to go with some yellow ochre in there too. So we have lots of color. What I'll do usually is um, I'll take some paper towel, paper towel or uh, tissue, dry off a little bit of the, I'm using now a needlepoint brush, number eight, number 10 this is, actually number 10 needlepoint brush. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that, mix it around, 
So we have a little bit of a mixture of darker and light tone tonal values. And you saw me, I did French ultramarine blue, um, Prussian blue, burnt sienna, burnt umber for that really, really dark, dark, rich color. And then over here we go with some more um, yellow ochre, raw sienna, just to kind of mix it up and have some darks and lights. Take a little bit of paint off. And we'll just do our, uh, we'll start putting in some of these trunks of the trees here with our needlepoint brush. Like that. Hit and miss, it doesn't have to be perfect. Then once you get maybe that first trunk in there, like so. So we get that first trunk of the tree. Then you can take your hand and put it high up on the brush like so. So you want to shift your fingers to the highest part of the brush. And you turn your brush up this way. And that's when you just start really having a good time. Look at that. Just kind of have a fun time kind of doing the branches of the tree. Follow your pencil lines that we did in the beginning. Not perfectly, but just general idea of where they are. And we said there was about a 40 degree angle for these branches. A couple of the branches come back this way and come down. Like that. And then over here you can do a little more loose, fun, free. In the background, you can do more lighter. Like that. There we go. And then there's another couple small... And the finer the branches, you just add a little more water. Add a little more water and dry off the brush a little bit on a paper towel or a tissue. And then you just do those really fine ones there like this. Perfect, look at that. So that's really the, the key is when you're doing your really fine branches, you choke up on the brush pretty high and then hold it up and then just dance the brush across the the paper. Same thing over here, start it right at the top of the roof area and then just kinda do some really just have some fun with that, you know? There we go, see how I'm doing that? I'm just really choking, again choke, or actually yeah, I'm going way high on the brush with my hand and then just holding it up high and then just starting it at the roof point there where the top of the roof is and then just doing some tree shapes and, and branches and you could put some branch twigs a couple go up most of them go up a couple once in a while they come down this way like that and that's all you have to do you got to practice this you, you practice it no problem you take some scrap paper you take some scrap paper with the brush and you just follow the the idea of holding the brush up high like this and you just try doing some branch shapes and you're trying to remember that a lot of times it's the main trunk is going to be straight so you can have your main trunk of your tree going straight like this pretty much up like that like so and really the, the more the more messy you make it or the more carefree you are with it the better it's going to look and then uh, so what I'm saying is don't fuss around too much and then once you get the larger trunk done then that's when you choke up on the brush high on the brush the back of the the main handle of the brush you go up high and you like that and then once you do that you, you just touch down on the paper and just Make the brush strokes outward, 45 degree angles, like this. So you wouldn't be going out straight this way on a 90 degree angle from your trunk. You're going at a 40 degree angle off of the trunk of the tree, like so. And then once in a while you take a little brush stroke and go down like that with a branch. And again you just take some pictures of trees from online and you can kind of see that trees do have that tendency to have that 40 degree angle on it 
where the branches branch out from the main trunk at that angle, like that. And then, you know, when you get back towards the back, scene, back of the scene, where it's in the far distance, then you're a little more carefree. You maybe make the colors a little more cooler looking, more cerulean blue, to tone down and make the branches look a little cooler in the distance, maybe a little more water, like that, cool, like a cool green. And that's all you have to do. And you just keep adding nice small little brush strokes like that. And I think that's good. And then we'll use our round brush again one more time to start maybe getting in some bushes here. And again, we're pretty much, we're really coming along really nicely here. So I'll add some burnt umber to this mix up here and we'll just do a little, again, hit and miss. So here, a little bit of, uh, you know, kind of trying to accentuate these doors a little bit. So I'm trying to make these doors stand out a little bit here. And then here we go back in here and then we add a little dark there. A couple splashes for some rocks and things like that. Some pebbles, some rocks. And there tends to be a little bit of some mud and dirt and things on the bottom of the barn here. So when it rains really hard along this barn, the mud splashes up on the side of the barn over here. So you get that little bit of the mud on the side of the barn splashing up. That's how that kind of gets that look of a little bit of some mud and things on the side of the barn. I'll add a little bit of splashing here and there just to give it a little bit of texture. And again, have fun with this. Practice the techniques more, more than anything else. Splashing. Practice the, the techniques with the, um, the rigger brush here number 10 rigger brush. I have a number 8, a number 10, and a, num a number 6. These are the Alvaro Castanet rigger brushes. They're um, needlepoint brushes. They work phenomenal. They last a long time. I've had these for years and they're still holding up beautifully. High quality. So we want to have good quality artist uh, tools. And again, I'm going to start putting in some back here, a little bit of that distant landscape to give us some of that distant look to it. So we have some, and then over here, maybe some of that dark, maybe we're going to have a little bit of a bush, some bushes over here. So I'll splash on some bushes. Don't be afraid. Splash on some of your bushes here. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to have a bush over here. Get some of that dark that we made before. Splash on some bushes over here. The looser and more carefree looks better. And we can take maybe our needlepoint brush and go back in there. Maybe they're like pines, pine bushes. So you make some of those pine looks. Pine trees do have those 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 needles and, and branches that go across on a on a 90 degree angle from the the main trunk of the tree so that's something we can do here Let's see we could do some of those haphazard don't worry about doing don't don't fuss around just get it in there do it quick what i'm saying is get this this painting done in like a, an hour don't spend like 
10 hours doing this. It'll look better if you go fast. There we go. See how we did that? Quick and easy. Have fun with it. A couple of uh, gorgeous pine bushes, pine trees over here. Maybe a couple bushes over here. Let's do maybe a yellow ochre. Maybe a yellow ochre. If it doesn't look good and you think oh, it doesn't come out good, blot it up with your tissue or your paper towel. Go back in and say, oh, I need to do darker. Let's do darker. Yeah, it looks a little better. Doing a little bit darker, more splashes. Maybe blot up a little bit. There we go. Maybe some of those dark, darker darks. Burnt umber, burnt, uh, burnt, burnt, burnt umber, burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue, Prussian blue. There we go. Splash. Add a little bit of bush shapes in there. Good. So we have our some bushes over here, some bush shapes. Okay. Now let's do a little bit of the dark burnt umber, Prussian blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna. And let's do a little bit of the darker darks over here. Reason being is I made this pretty dark over here. So now I've got to go even darker closer and up front here. If I go too dark over here, so I'll lighten that up a little bit like that. And And then maybe uh, some cerulean blue. A little bit of our mix there with some cerulean blue. So we're just going to reuse what we mixed there with a little bit of cerulean blue. And then over here. We can blot that up there. bush and maybe there's a bush here in the background that gives us a little bit of distance in there so it kind of looks like we're the distance you want to add some three-dimensional feel to your painting so you add some of that little bit of looks like there's a field in the back here that looks pretty good And uh, what else can we do here? Maybe a couple darker bits of uh, shadowing under here, under the uh, under the eaves of the roof here, the uh, under the rake edge of the roof. There we go. Then maybe we can use our needlepoint brush again. Maybe we'll get some details along this door here. Again, the needlepoint brush, perfect for details doing this type of thing. Getting some of the details on this, these barn doors. And there's a little bit of some hardware on there. Maybe a little bit of a hardware door. There we got some a handle maybe, some a hasp, a handle, a hasp, maybe some hinges here. Let's not leave anything to chance. Let's do it. The more we can add a little more detail to this part here where the door is, that'll kind of 
bring us to that door. That's an exciting feature of the painting, the door and the window up here up top. These are exciting parts to the painting where people are intrigued when they look at your artwork and they go, ooh, there's a door. Cool. You know, maybe there's something. We're going to go in the door into the barn. We're going to look around. So if we add a little more excitement to that barn door area, that's going to be more of a focal point for us. That'll be a good thing. It'll be a, a thing that's going to make our painting look better. And I'm going to put some more detail up here on the window up here, like so. And again, you, you know, have fun with your paintings. Try it a few different times. Um, these here, we're going to have some, so I'm just going to do some verticals quickly, not um, haphazardly, just add some quick verticals like this. You can see what I'm doing here, just a little bit of paint on my needlepoint brush, scraping the paper on a side angle like this. There's a little bit of a break point here on the building. There's the separation of the lower portion and the upper portion where this is the clapboard up here. You can add some lines around the windows a little bit. You can add some more darker shadows here and there, hit and miss. Don't do it all in one spot. A couple dark spots here and there, like that. A couple of little dabs of um, spots and things like that to make it look a little, break it up a little bit. Prussian blue, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna. You can do this to add a couple of really dark darks. Here and there, not everywhere. Like that. Like this too, under here. And you can see as you work these as you work these darker tonal values in your painting it's going to look good it's going to add more excitement person viewing the artwork is going to look around the painting. You could take your round brush again. Cerulean blue. And you can make some darker sky washes over here with cerulean blue and right away that kind of like gives us a nice look of accentuating the gable part of the roof here and the lines of the roof so you don't like that so if you can do that that's another positive thing you can do with the painting here is kind of go around the around the building the barn a little bit with some darker wash the blue cerulean blue and then I just kind of blend it on out over here but you can see this is very simple nothing too fancy here And again, a little more detail to the barn is not going to hurt anything. So I'm going to put a little bit of barn feel to the doors. And then maybe we'll do a little more uh, burnt umber and yellow ochre, raw umber. 
Let's add some darker golden color to the ground level here, to the foreground. Maybe even add some green. So I'm using maybe some green here. I'll use some chromium of oxide. Like that. Adding a little bit of that green and brown and gold kind of gives us that nice separation where you can really see the ground now. The ground, the grass in the foreground, the very foreground here. Looks really good. Add a little hint of maybe some, a little bit of that um, viridian. Maybe a little viridian there to If you don't like the viridian, no problem. Add some cadmium lemon yellow. Maybe it's just turning to fall right now, to autumn. And you have some of that still really vibrant green grass along the uh, foreground here. It's your happy painting. You create what you want. The colors, everything is your choice. But the main idea is more of a low key painting um, or a medium key, low key painting. Actually, it's medium key painting. Not really a lot of extreme lights and darks. Just kind of like a nice medium key. Tonal values are mellow. Lots of interest, lots of uh, variations. Have fun with it. And you'll see that. I added just a little bit of cadmium orange. That will that will mellow out too. The cadmium orange I'm just putting on there, it's gonna kind of you know lighten up a little bit, but it looks good along the bottom of the barn. Maybe a little bit along here. And as you can see, I try to scrub around a little bit, get some more variation. And I think that's good. I hope you had a great time. Hope you'll subscribe to this channel. We're going to do a lot more paintings like this. You can have a fun time. This one here, the key is, you know, you're using your um, needlepoint brush to get a lot of those really fine, beautiful tree uh, limbs trunks, shapes of the tree limbs and, and, and twigs, all that really brings a ton of great interest into this painting because how else are you going to really get some beautiful um, uh, details like that? You have to have the correct brushes. So we use the needlepoint brush, we use the flat brush to get our square um, shapes on the windows of the barn here, and then we used our regular, you know, everyday round brush, watercolor brush that we always use for the larger washes in the sky in the barn, but you can see that these three brushes really are fantastic to get all the details you need to. So you need a little small number two or so for your windows to get those square shapes. You need the needlepoint brush to get all your beautiful tree shapes in there. And then the round brush we always use, of course, every time we're painting we're always using our round brush and that gets you the large washes. So hope you're having fun with this. I hope you will stay with us here on our channel. Keep coming back, learning new things. Um, we're uh, always having a good time here. And we always uh, want 
we always try to do something a little different every once in a while so you kind of get some different ideas with your watercolors. And, and here you can see we had a fun time. And that's, that's about it. So thanks again for coming by, for watching, for painting along with us here. And we have a lot more, a lot more videos uh, coming down the pike. And um, I'm sure you're going to enjoy them. And again, please stay tuned. Thumbs up if you like this video. Um, also, too, subscribe. Down on the right-hand side here, that red button, subscribe. If you subscribe, you'll be getting our new videos each week as we paint. And as, as well, if you hit the notification bell, that'll alert you when our painting and uh, drawing starts back up again the next time. So you can jump right in and work along with us. Happy painting, everybody. Again, thanks so much for all the great comments. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.